Car tires, crutches, flour containers, and carrots? Cartels have found creative ways to smuggle fentanyl across our borders and into our communities at an alarming rate. And busts of the deadly drug are just going up. So what are the key cartel strategies for getting fentanyl into the U.S.? Former senior DEA special agent and global director of counter-narcotics at Rigaku Analytical Devices, Michael Brown, joins us now to explain. Michael, thanks for being here. Thanks for your service. How are smugglers getting through our border with this deadly substance? Well, good morning, Pete. I mean, one of the primary methodologies used by the smugglers now is simply putting, you know, millions of tablets of fentanyl or fentanyl powder into concealed compartments, what we call traps, into vehicles. And we know probably 85 to 90 percent of the fentanyl that comes into the country is coming across the official borders in vehicles hidden in cargo or large tractor trailers, which makes it very, very difficult to find in reference to the number of vehicles that come across the border every day. Yeah, Michael, so if most of it is going through entry points, how many vehicles are searched? Because I, I, I know that they can't search all of them. How do they make that choice? Well, and this is the, the critical point that the cartels rely on. They know that approximately 80 percent of border personnel now is being drawn from the border checkpoints to do other issues to support the, the immigration process. So they're using a, a process, what we call shotgunning. They're simply sending hundreds of vehicles at one time into the border, ex, border checkpoints because they know customs can only search a few vehicles at a time, and in order to keep that traffic moving, right, a lot of vehicles that are carrying fentanyl will not be searched. So once a vehicle is located, it has fentanyl in it or, or methamphetamine or another narcotic, a search team goes and then they manage that particular vehicle, which takes personnel away from checking other vehicles. But the cartels understand this. They work this equation into their distribution calculations. They know a certain amount of fentanyl will be seized at the checkpoints, but it's a guarantee that they're going to get four or five or hundreds of other vehicles through the checkpoints without being inspected. So part of the reason the foot traffic and, and the running across the border is so problematic is it draws so much manpower there that you have less at official crossings, and then they ha can't check every car. The cartel knows that. They factor in losses. They send, and then they conceal it. I mean, it's, it's got to take a lot of time in some instances to find this fentanyl, considering how creative they've gotten. Yeah, I mean, you have to understand that the cartels have a sophisticated infrastructure, garages, which basically can take a car apart, create hidden cavities, and then reseal, you know, millions of pills into the, the framework of a vehicle or a tractor trailer. And, and to find that, you would have to, you'd have to x-ray the vehicle, then you'd have to have a crew out there to actually break the vehicle down to find these bulk substances. And, of course, once they cross the border, they go to a garage and the vehicle is then taken apart. The drugs are taken out and the vehicle is sent back to Mexico for another shipment. So not only is it time consuming, but it's incredibly difficult to find hmm. the tails or the signs of these vehicles that are actually carrying fentanyl. Man, Michael, when you break that down, it, it, it it's, uh, gives you a sense of the scope of the problem we face, which doesn't seem to be getting any better. And, and you speak with a lot of expertise. Michael Brown, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you, it. Pete. Take care. You got it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.